Is everybody ready? Everybody ready? All right, we go live in five, four, three. Good morning. I'm Pastor Greg Fetzer. And I'm Pastor Teal Anderson. Welcome to this morning's service of the word for the third Sunday in the season of Lent. If you haven't done so already, recommend that you download the worship booklet, the bulletin, the liturgy for the day, and you can find a copy of that on lcgselca.org, lcgselca.org. And before I begin, um, before we begin today, I wanted to thank Sean Nisal, who's behind the camera. Thank you, Sean, for all that you've done this weekend to get ready for this, and to Heather and Joel Redicky for all they've done to get this onto the internet. So, all right, I will hand it over to Pastor Tim. And we begin with the order for confession and forgiveness on page two. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We, we confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. The grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you, you come, come all things that are good. good. Lead us, us by the inspiration of your spirit to know, know those things that are right, and, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And again, he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another, and that one they killed. And so it was with many others. Some they beat, and others they killed. He still had one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, 
and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected had become the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it was amazing in our eyes. When the religious authorities realized that he had told this parable against them, they wanted to arrest him, but they feared for the crowd. So they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Well, if you'll forgive the pun, this parable has its roots in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the vineyard is understood as God's people. And the hope is that God's people act according to God's will, with justice, righteousness, and loving kindness. When they do so, when they're faithful to their God, they're faithful to God's word, they bear tremendous fruit. Fruitful are the people. And when they go against God's word or turn to other gods, the vineyard, that is the people, bear wild grapes, sour and unfit for anything. Now Jesus takes this Old Testament metaphor of the vineyard and tells a new parable in the Gospel of Mark. But he does something different with it. The focus is not now on the vineyard that is God's people. Instead, the focus is on the tenants to whom the owner of the vineyard rented out the vineyard. It is they who are in charge, have been put in charge by the owner of the vineyard. And they act cruelly, unjustly. They act with violence. This parable is made clear that it is directed to the religious and political leaders of Jesus' day, to those in his hearing and those who would undoubtedly hear of this telling of this parable as word of mouth was underway. Jesus confronts them and charges them with their own unjust actions, with treating the people unfairly, with claiming what is theirs, those things that are not theirs, but that are ultimately God's. As the son in the parable is killed, they plot to kill Jesus. Three times now in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus has predicted his death on the cross and his resurrection. Perhaps we can understand this parable as a storytelling for a fourth time. Jesus predicts his death and his resurrection. In the context where we find Jesus in this Gospel of Mark, it's all about authority. Directly before this parable, the religious leaders question Jesus' authority question by whose authority John is baptizing people. Jesus doesn't answer. He's cryptic in this response. But it's clear Jesus has claimed authority, God's own authority. And then after this parable, there's this back and forth. You may remember this text. Render unto, unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. They present a coin, and on the coin is the Caesar's image. And Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. The implication is that we who are created in God's image give over our entire life to God and God's authority. So this parable is all about authority. God calls those in authority to make a society where all have what is needed for a fruitful and fulfilling and faithful life. God calls those in authority to act with righteousness, that is, a right way in God's eyes, according to God's will. And God calls all those in authority to live lives of loving kindness, that is, compassion, that is, caring for the others. As we said last week, for empathic imagination to put ourselves in one another's shoes. What might we hear in this text today? 
Is this a call for those of us in authority to act justly, kindly, righteousness? Surely it must be. And there's a wider call in all of this, too, for those who lack authority in various places. It falls on us to hold our leaders accountable, that we consistently remind folks that what God's will is, is again, justice, righteousness, and loving kindness. With our voices, with our community actions, with our very lives, we call all to account that the vineyard that is God's people, near and far, might bear fruit. Now, the irony in all of this is that the religious leaders do end up killing Jesus, of course. That's the message of the cross. That's the message of Good Friday. But the irony is this. They unwittingly, by doing so, by killing Jesus, actually fulfill God's plan of salvation. Jesus rises from the dead. That's the story of Easter. And by doing so, conquers death and the power of sin. For us in these times, we know that God always has that last word. That last word of God is light and life and love. It's difficult times. Our nation is on edge. Indeed, the world is on edge because of this coronavirus. There's chaos, perhaps, where there was once some semblance of order. We're looking to those who are in charge to lead us. The gospel message tells us that Jesus Christ is the foundation of our faith. That it is indeed ultimately God who has authority. Surely we turn to God in these times as we do in good times. We know that God is with us in the midst of our pain, our suffering, our worry, our anxieties. God is with us. I think another thing that maybe this parable reminds us of is that we are the church. That's you and me. This building is not the church. We can't gather here today, but we still are the church. Whether we're gathered together or whether we're dispersed, we are the body of Christ. And we can continue to behave in the ways to be the people that God wants us to be, even when apart. We have the blessings of technology. You know, technology is not holy or profane. It's what we do with it. And we're blessed in this day and age to do things like this live feed for a service. You know you can pick up a phone and call those that you love and remind them of that love. We also might want to do something extra, go above and beyond and check in on those who are more vulnerable. We can be the body of Christ even when we can't gather for regular worship. To those of you who are ill, our prayers go out to you. We want you to know the peace that God is with you. And God wills for wholeness and health. And to those, all of us, who are dispersed, we remember we are the church. God continues to work through us, the power of the Son, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of living water, send your church beyond boundaries to proclaim your grace. May its witness be a source of refreshment for thirsty souls. Strengthen our voices that all people can know and believe that Jesus is truly the Savior of the world. We pray for Bishops Elizabeth Eaton and William Gold. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of living water, protect from pollution or misuse all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams. Bless the work of those who dig wells and those who advocate for access to clean water, that all people and animals have enough to drink. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of living water, open the hearts of leaders and authorities, that they hear the cries of the suffering and act with compassion toward them. Bring peace to, the, to disputed lands and bring reconciliation to people divided by race, culture, or nationality. We pray for President Donald Trump, Governor Larry Hogan, and all who serve in government. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of living water, mend the hearts of those who grieve broken relationships, whether by conflict, abuse, divorce, or death. Draw near to all who are ill, especially Barbara Danatel, Trudy Doss, Betsy Foster, Bonnie Henline, Eric Hetzer, Warren Hillstrom, Joan Cooper, Don Coop, Barbara Langmead, Gwendolyn Maxson, Phyllis McCracken, Sylvia Moransky, Warren Monks, Elsie Marie Neeler, Lowell Rep, Harry Rusky, Jean Sherman, Betty Steiner, Karen Sugden, Juanita Tausenshane, Debbie Verbillis, Lois Rainwright, David White, Bruce Zimmerman, and all those we lift in our hearts. Assure those questioning your presence in the midst of doubt or suffering. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of living water, renew us in the promises of baptism. Join us together in worship, fellowship, and sharing your good news. Embolden us to serve others and to work for justice and peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of living water, grant us your grace as we adjust our lives in response to the coronavirus outbreak. Grant healing to those who contract the virus. Protect those who care for the sick. Give us wisdom in discerning what we can do to stop the spread of the virus and be with all those who face difficulties from the closure of schools and workplaces. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of living water, we thank you for those who endured suffering and who now boast in the glory of God. Pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts and give us peace as we live in the hope of our salvation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We invite you later today to take a moment to call someone, or text them, or reach out to them in some other way to share the peace. I now refer you to page 9 in your worship folder, where there are three ways to give. We receive offerings by check or cash that can be mailed to the church office. We have e-giving options available through our website, and bill paying can be done through your financial institution. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, 
we, we give, give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.